Assalamualaikum and a very good day everyone. So we meet again in this video which is we still under chapter 3. But now we want to solve linear algebraic equation using iterative method. In this chapter, it is aimed to solve actually just small numbers of linear algebraic equation by using iterative methods and this iterative method involving here Jacobi method and also gauss seidel method means that as the expected outcomes by the end of the by the end of this video, you should be able to solve linear algebraic equation by using these two types of method. So class. The first video here, I will cover how to solve linear algebraic equation by using Jacobi method and then next we will go to the gauss seidel method. In Jacobi method, the following step involved. Step number one, you need to rearrange the equation to make the system diagonally dominant. And then we have to write the equation in explicit form. Then the calculation process starts. Okay, the calculation process starts by assuming initial value of the unknown for the first iteration. In step number one class, if you remember previously, I mentioned that you need to rearrange the system such that the system is diagonally dominant. For a system of n equation of ax equal to b, a sufficient condition for convergence is that for every row matrix, the absolute value of diagonal element should be greater than or equal to the sum of absolute values of the diagonal elements in that row. Means that here, you need to check the condition whether your absolute value of AII, remember this one should be in diagonal dominance, so it is AII, must be greater than the sum of other values at the same row. For, for example, class, let's say if I have the matrix 3, 1, 1, and then we have 1, 5, 2, then we have the last row is 2, 3, 7. Okay, in this case, for this step number, number one, I need to check whether the values, absolute value of a diagonal dominant is it greater than or equal than the other values at the same row. So in this case, for the first row, I have this one, three, as my diagonal dominant. Okay, we have here for the first row, A11 as diagonal dominant. So here we check absolute value of A11. Is it greater than or equal with the values uh, at the same row, which is here the sum of 1 plus 1. In this case, we can see that 3 is greater than the sum of 2, means that this one fulfill this condition. And then, if you check for the second row, the second row, uh, the value at diagonal dominant is given by absolute value of A22. Is it this value A22, is it greater than a absolute value of a21 plus a23. Uh, so in this case, a21 is given by 1, a23 is given by 2. So we can see that a22 na 5 is greater than or equal to 1 plus 2, which is this one full fee, uh, this row, uh, this condition. Uh, so next, for the third row, we will have here our a33 as a diagonal dominant means that now we have 7. Now we check is it greater than uh, the other elements, the sum of the other element at the same row. So is it greater than 2 plus 3? Means that in this case it is full fee. So it full fee the, uh, this condition. Hence in step number 1 we can say that uh, all values here are uh, fulfill the diagonally dominant condition. But class, let's say I have here negative 3. In this one, I have negative 5 and then negative 7. Remember that this condition refers to the absolute value. Means that here you have to put here negative uh, uh, A11 as absolute of negative 3. So absolute value of negative 3, it becomes in this case 3 still greater than and in this case, same, we put here absolute value. In this one also, we put here absolute value of negative 7. 
means that in this case we can see that it is at, uh, actually when absolute value of negative 5 it become 5 that is still greater than this 3 and this one absolute value of negative 7 becomes 7 so it is greater than 5 means that doesn't matter the uh, the sign here but the most important part here you have to put it in absolute value so it become now positive is still greater than uh, the sum of the other two elements at the same row but class let's say i have another example for example here i have a matrix uh, 3 1 1 and then i have here 2 3 7 then i have 1 5 2 in this case i can see for the first row we have the same values as the first example here means that this one full fee the diagonally dominant condition we don't have to check but for the second row we see that a to 2 is given by 3 it is is it greater than 2 plus 7 so in this case it is not full fee this condition means that we need to change row letter okay we check for row number 3 this is uh, the diagonal dominant for row number 3 is given by 2 is it greater than 1 plus 5 so in this case it is not fulfill this condition what we need to do here class you need to change row number 3 become row number 2 and row number 2 become row number 3 so when you change row here you will have 3 1 1 uh, 1 5 2 and 2 3 7 so then for this one you will have a system that fulfill the diagonal dominant condition means that we can proceed to the next step that is you have to write the equation in an explicit form in this case each unknown is written in terms of the other unknowns for example if we have this 3 by 3 matrix how can we write in explicit form here? So now class for this A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, A31, A32, A33. And then we have system here, the unknown X1, X2, X3. And then we have here a vector B, B1, b2 b3 now step number two we need to write our equation in explicit form means that here first we transform first this equation into uh, this system into equation we'll have here a11 x1 plus a12 x2 plus a13 x3 which is equal to b1 and then we have second row a21 x1 plus a22 x2 plus a23 x3 which is equal to b2 and the third row we have a31 x1 plus a32 x2 plus a33 x3 which is equal to b3 in this case we need to solve for the first equation write x1 as subject okay x1 as subject and then for the second equation we write x2 as subject and then for the third equation we write x3 as subject means that here class when we uh, write in explicit form you have to write here x1 as subject so you will have here a11 x1 all equation that you move to this side you will have equal to b1 minus a12 x2 minus a13 x3 and then this a11 you can move to this side so that we divide all by this a11 okay this one also divide by a11 we'll have here x1 equal to b1 minus a12 x2 minus a13 x3 which is divided by a11 the same thing we did for the second equation but for the second equation we need to write x2 as subject so we'll have here x2 equal to a b2 
you will put all this a21 and a23 x1 x3 here to this side you will have here b2 minus a21 x1 minus a23 x3 and then a we have a22 here we need to divide okay by a22 and then plus for the third equation we write x3 as subject so we'll have here x3 equal to now b3 minus a3 uh, 2x2 and then you need to divide this all by a33 means that class you will have the equation that have now x1 x2 x3 as subject this is the formula for uh, Jacobi method but class it will involve next iteration when involve iteration you need to put here this one will be okay the subject here x1 x2 x3 will be your future evaluation okay but the value in this formula will be your current evaluation so in that case we will put here for the future evaluation okay means that the future iteration we put as k plus one where is k here can be equal to zero one two and so on and then for the current value Okay, current value, you can put it as K. Means that here, X1 here, you need to put it as K plus 1 here. That is the value that we want to compute by using this formula. But to compute this X1, you need to have previous value of X2 and X3. So we put in the bracket here K and in this bracket K. And remember, this one refer to the iteration okay and same thing we did for the second and third equation here we put this one as k plus one okay k plus one and here as k means that the value that we already have here also k and here is k plus one okay the value that we want to compute and then the value we, that we already have k and also k this is the final formula for uh, Jacobi method. And class, once we got that formula, we can, we can compute uh, or start the calculation process by assuming initial value or, or uh, sometimes initial value will be given in the equation. If not given in the equation, so you need to assume that initial value equal to all zero. Let's go to this example. This question asks us to use Jacobi method to obtain the solution for the following system. And we need to use here four decimal places in our computation. And also, we need to let here the initial value of xi is given by this value. And we have to compute up to here given two iteration and also need to calculate approximate percent relative error for each iteration so class how to do this remember back uh, remember we have learned previously that the step of the jacobi method is given by the first one you need to rearrange the equation such that it is uh, diagonally dominant in this case class we have this one as our equation so in this case if i transform into matrix i have 8 1 1 2 1 9 1, negative 7, 2, and then I have here times x1, x2, x3, which is equal to 10, negative 2, 4. In this case class, if we check for the first row, this 8, okay, the first row we have 8 as our diagonal dominant, it is now greater than 1 plus 1, which is greater than or equal to 2, so that it fulfills the condition of diagonal dominant but for the second row one here it is not greater than two plus nine which is here one is not greater than uh, 11 this is our main diagonal it is not greater than the sum of two values so it not fulfill the diagonal condition 
and then we have the next one the third uh, the di main diagonal here is given by 2 so it is not greater than absolute value of 1 plus absolute value of negative 7 means that 2 is not greater than 8 here so it is not full fee diagonal dominant condition how to make it full fee diagonal dominant, uh, dominant condition so class you have to rearrange this row such that we can switch row we can change the position of the row we not change the position we just change the position of the row so now row number two become row number three and row number three become row number two means that here what we did r2 become r3 and r3 become r2 when we did this one we will have here uh, our new matrix a811 and then we have here uh, remember r3 become r2 so we will have here one negative seven two and then we have for the third row is 2, 1, 9. Okay. X1, X2, X3, which is equal to here 10. Remember class, you switch A matrix, you also need to change B vector. Because if not, you will not change the position of the equation, but you will, you will change the equation value. So now we have 10 here. And 4 become row number 2. So 4 and then row number 3 become negative. This one will be our new system. Okay, we not change the question. We just change the position of the uh, row. Next class, what we need to do, we need to write the equation in explicit form. So remember, you, will, you already have the formula previously, x1 as subject and here k plus 1 refer to the iteration number. So now we will have based on previous, okay, based on this matrix. Okay, remember this is our b, it should minus uh, a1, uh, a12, x1, a13, x2. Uh, sorry, A13, A12, X2, A13, X3. So now class we have 10 minus X2 minus X3. But now we have K here. Okay. And then we divide by A. And then class for X2, K plus 1, you will have your it's B is 4 minus X1, K minus 2x2k which is here we divide by this one negative 7 negative 7 and then class for x3k plus 1 we will have here negative 2 minus 2x1k it is not power here class it is referred to the iteration minus x2k and then this one we need to divide by. Next class, we start the calculation uh, by using initial condition given in the equation. Okay, for the first iteration, first iteration means that your k should be equal to zero. Remember class, you have a formula previously. Okay, I write again the formula. So now we have this previous formula. Now we want to do first iteration. For the first iteration, our k here equal to zero. We let k equal to 0 for the first iteration. And remember, in initial value is given xi, 0 equal to 0, 0, 0, transpose. What does it mean by this, uh, this equation? It means that now you have your x, 0, the initial that is for k equal to 0 is 0, 0, 0, that is here, is referred to x1, 0, equal to 0. And then we have here, this one is x2, 0, and the last one here is x3, 0. That is, all x, all starting point of x is equal to 0. Then class, when we have this one, we need to use this formula to compute the first iteration value of x1, x2, and x3. That is now based on this k equal to 0. So we'll have here x1. When k equal to 0, that is here 0 plus 1. 
for this one means that you will have x11. x11 equal to, based on this formula, 10 minus x1. Remember k is 0. Previous value minus x3 is, okay, x3 0 which is this one, x3 previous value or initial condition divided by a. So in this case, you will have 10 minus x10 is given here. Uh, uh, sorry, this one x20. Sorry, this one will be, this one is x2. x20 is given in this question, which is 0. And then x30 also is given in this, uh, in this initial condition that is 0. So 10 minus 0 minus 0 divided by 8. That is, you will have here 10 over 8. So class next, we need to compute x2, which is x2 at 0 plus 1, because k0, which is x2 at first iteration. That is equal to substitute this formula. We have 4 minus x1 previous value or initial value minus 2x3 initial value divided by negative 7. So based on this, all these x are 0, you will have here negative 4 divided by 7, which is negative 0 0.5714. And then class, we need to compute x3, 0 plus 1, by using this formula. So we'll have here x3 at first iteration, which is equal to negative 2, okay, minus 2x1 at initial minus x2 at initial divided by 9. In this case, all this x1 at initial, x2 as initial is given in this initial condition, all 0. So you got negative 2 over 9 as the solution, which is this one equal to negative 0 0.2222. So class, what we did here, we compute the value of x at First iteration. The question asks you, if you still remember, the question asks you to compute up to second iteration. But before that, you need to find epsilon a. Okay? You need to find epsilon a, that is, you need to find the approximate percent relative error for all x. In this case, our epsilon a for x1, it is equal to the absolute value of current solution. If you still remember, the value is 1.25 here. Okay, so 1.25 minus previous value. That is initial value. That is minus 0 divided by current value 1.25, which is times 100%. You'll got here 100% error. And then class, we need to compute epsilon a x2, which is based on previous computation. Epsilon A, uh, sorry, the current solution or the solution at first iteration is given by this negative 0 0.5714. So class will have here the current solution negative 0 0.5714 minus previous value or minus initial condition divided by negative 0 0.5714 times 100%. So, in this case, again, you will got 100% error. And then class, when we compute epsilon A for X3, we will have here equal to, remember the current solution for X3 is negative 0.2222 minus previous value 0 divided by negative 0.2222 times 100%. That is, again, this one equal to 100%. So for the first iteration, we got for all x 100% error. That is very big error. So now class, we want to improve the solution by go to the second iteration. How to do that? Remember, we have general formula. Okay, that is given by a uh, uh, previous formula of this one. Okay, previous formula of this one, we'll use again this formula to compute for the second iteration. But now, our k is no longer 0. Okay, for the second iteration, our k here will be equal to 1. And then, you will use the value from first iteration as value for k. 
Okay, not for k. There is value for x i for each k. So now, class, we have the formula which is we want to compute here x one here k plus one, right? So now our k now is one. So we compute value of x one at second iteration. It is equal to ten minus x two at k. So at two at first iteration minus x3 at first iteration divided by a. So you will have here 10 minus x2 at first iteration is this value. Remember class, this one x1 at first iteration, this one x2 at first iteration, and this one x3 at first iteration. So 10 minus negative 0 0.5714 minus negative 0 0.2222 divided by Okay. When you solve this one, you will got the answer equal to 1.3492. And then class, by using the same way, but now we want to go to the x2. x2 at second iteration. Why here 2? Because same, k plus 1, k is 1. Equal to the formula of 4 minus x1 at first iteration minus 2 x3 at first iteration divided by negative 7. So all this, for this one, it is no longer 0 like previous iteration. x1 at first and x2 at first iteration is given by this uh, answer. So now we will have here 4 minus uh, 1.25 minus 2 times x3 at first iteration is negative 0 0.2222 divided by negative 7. This one you solve, you got negative 0 0.4563. And then class, you did the same way. You can do the same way for the x3, which is for second iteration. In this case, we use the third formula we have, which is negative 2 minus 2x1 at first iteration minus x2 at first iteration divided by negative 9. We will have here negative 2 minus 2 times 2.5, okay, which is minus negative 0 0.5714. This one divided by negative 9. We will have the answer here, negative 0 0.4365. So class, this is our the solution for our second iteration for all x. And then, it is not yet finished because the question asks you also to compute approximate percent relative error. Remember, we have here our xi at first iteration equal to 1.25, negative 0 0.5714, uh, sorry, 5714. And then we have negative 0 0.2222. And then for the second iteration, we have our xi at second iteration equal to 1.3492. And then you have negative 0 0.4563. And the last value, negative 0 0.4365. And now we want to compute the absolute uh, approximate percent relative error that is you have to compute epsilon a for x1 which is remember class this is from chapter 1 the formula is given by current solution or present solution that is this value okay minus this one divided by current value times 100 percent so we got 1.3492 minus 1.25 Divided by 1.3492 times 100%, you'll got the error here equal to 7.35%. And then we did the same way for epsilon A for, this, uh, for X2, that is absolute value of current value. This is the current solution for X2 minus the previous one, this one. So you will have here negative 0 0.4563 minus this one. So plus 0 0.5714, you need to divide by current solution negative 0 0.4563 times 100%. So the answer is 25.22% error. 
you can do the same you can do the same way for epsilon a x3 that is this one the current solution is given by this value that is negative 0 0.4365 minus previous value is this value so minus negative plus 0 0.2222 and divided by negative 0 0.4563 times 100 percent you'll got the answer equal to 49.10 percent so we can conclude that after two iteration we got all x here with this epsilon uh, a for each x so class this is how we can use jacobi method in uh in solving linear algebra equation i remember that all steps involved in Jacobi method are the first step you need to uh, check whether your system is diagonally dominant or not. If not, you have to rearrange the system such that it is diagonal, uh, diagonally dominant. And then there are some cases where we cannot fulfill this condition, but it is okay you can use your uh, original metric. If, it is, uh, if you rearrange the equation, it becomes worse. Okay. so step number two you have to write the equation in explicit form because this one will be our uh, general formula for jacobi method and for step number uh, three we can do the iteration by assuming initial value or you can use initial value given in the uh, in the equation okay and the calculation start uh, based on, for example, k equal to 0, k equal to 1, and so on, based on the how many iterations required by the question. So, class, it comes to the end of Jacobi method video. We can see next how we can use Gauss-Seidel method in solving linear algebra equation. Thank you, class, for your uh, attention. See you in the next video.